Okay, so for the film Nebraska, uh, I'm going to be focusing on um, later life development theories because I think there was um, more than one character that you could focus on that kind of fit um, a couple of the bigger theories. Um, the three that I'm going to be focusing on the most are uh, the disengagement theory kind of coupled with the activity theory because I think when talking about one, you kind of have to talk about the other. Um, I'm going to be talking about the uh, socio-emotional selectivity theory kind of along with the positivity effect because again, same as uh, the disengagement and activity theories, those are things that kind of go together. Um, and then finally, I'm going to be talking about Maslow's uh, integrity versus despair uh, conflict, which happens in um, late development as we know. So um, I'm going to start with the uh, disengagement theory and like activity theory. Um, so I think that uh, the disengaged theory is most clearly seen in uh, the main character, Woody. Um, he is like pretty turned off throughout the film. He doesn't really say much. Uh, the most he says is at the end, basically when he's talking to his son saying, um, you know, I wanted to uh, have this money to like pass on to you and your brother. Um, and I think uh, that kind of um, shows uh, that like when you don't have a purpose, like you become more and more withdrawn. Um, it was talked about very early on in the film that like since he had stopped working, Woody didn't really seem to have a purpose. Um, and even though he was always uh, quiet and I guess more like disengaged, um, it seems from the film that he got more that way um, in his later life. Um, I think that in terms of Brofman Brunners, it's a little bit weird to like look at it in a Brofman Brunner type system um, because it seems so black and white, but really I think the microsystem affects um, Woody in this particular theory model uh, because he um, isn't really encouraged by his family to do anything different. He's not really encouraged to get a hobby or anything like that. You know, they're not like oh, dad, like, why don't you start working on cars again? In fact, they're almost discouraging him um, in the very beginning of the film when Woody is trying to work on uh, his car and, like, have some engagement. Um, it's, like, not encouraged by uh, family at all. Um, and I think that makes him, like, more and more withdrawn. And then at the exosystem level, um, I think the best way to view this for Woody in particular would be um, basically just his disengagement from his, um, kind of like social surroundings from, um, not only where he's living in Montana, but also when he goes back to his hometown of, uh, Hawthorne, everybody there's kind to him, but he's not really that engaged. Um, and then at the macro system level, um, I think this is kind of influenced just because, I think as a society, we kind of hold this belief in like retirement and like you don't do much as you get older. And um, that's kind of like influencing Woody. This is just like what you do. It's normal to like get older and like not really be that active, even though we can see from science that it's not healthy. Um, and then on the flip side of Woody, who, uh, you know, kind of rolling into activity theory, um, this is best demonstrated through his ex-girlfriend, uh, Peg. So when we first see her at the um, Hawthorne Republican office, she seems like very happy. She's one of the more lively characters. Um, and I think that is because of activity theory. Um, she still has a job. She's still, you know, same age as Woody, presumably, at least very close. Um, and she's still working. Uh, she has engagement, it sounds like, from her kids and her grandchildren. And even though her husband has passed, it seems that she has that sense of community. She's very involved. She's talking to people. Um, I think at the, I think like this activity for um, Peg is influenced at the microsystem level from her husband. Uh, she says that they basically ran the paper together when he was alive. And then she just kind of carried that over um, from the exosystem you know, I would say that her town really um, almost like, ex 
expects it. It's not explicitly stated, but it, in a small town like Hawthorne, one would assume that um, there's kind of that expectation from the smaller community to um, continue to produce the paper and give the people the news. And even though her husband is passed, like, she's still capable of doing this. Um, and as a result of her uh, continuing to stay active and engaged with her community, she seems a lot happier than Woody does, who is fully disengaged. Um, okay, so then rolling in to uh, socio-emotional selectivity theory. Um, so <laughs> I think the, I think the, best example of this is absolutely uh, the mom in the film, Kate. So she, as we can see, is um, she's very, very sure of herself. Uh, she's tough. She has a very strong sense of self um, and has a very grandiose personality. So as we know from uh, socio-emotional selectivity theory, that is a mouthful, um, this basically is that uh, people seek out um, those who kind of support their worldview in the most simplistic way. Um, so when we can like see her demonstrating this um, along with the positivity effect, uh, when she goes and meets uh, the boys in Hawthorne, um, she's like basically saying that a lot of the men in the town wanted to get in her pants and... Um, for the most part, she's like really romanticizing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say the town or the people in it, more that uh, the way people related to her. She has a very positive outlook on who she used to be and how people used to view her. And that is very much basically what the positivity effect um, is. Um, so, I think uh, this is influenced on the microsystem. Again, just because her family doesn't really say anything, she's never really challenged. The one time she is challenged is when um, David is like, oh, did everybody want to get in your pants? And like, that's that's just kind of the end of that conversation. Um, there's nobody that really challenges that. And even when um, she goes back to the town, this like positive idea of herself is reinforced um, by the people she's surrounded by. So it seems that a lot of people in Hawthorne, they all know each other, it's a small community, and it really seems like um, Kate and Woody are some of the only people that really got out, at least that we know of. So with her having this um, positive outlook on her past self, um, this is like reinforced on the exosystem level when they go back to Hawthorne because people kind of see them as um, almost big shots um, in in a certain way. And then um, I think this is influenced on the macro system level. Um, honestly, actually, you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say the macro system level. I think this is almost um, more of an influence of the corona system, which is not something uh, I have talked about in terms of Bronfman Brenner's ecological model yet because it hasn't really seemed to fit. Um, but I think with um, kind of the time that Woody and Kate were raised in, um, you aren't really allowed to like feel bad for yourself ever. You're only really allowed to um, kind of pick yourself up by the bootstraps. That's kind of the mentality there. Um, and that's absolutely an age and like generational thing. And so I think um, in Brafton Brenner system, the chronosphere specifically plays into this uh, socio-emotional selectivity theory and positivity effect that we see in Kate. Um, and then finally, uh, we go into Erickson's integrity versus despair conflict. Um, so this is again, generally just uh, a feeling of being whole and comfortable with oneself. Um, you know, Woody doesn't really seem to have this. Um, he doesn't he doesn't talk much, so it's kind of hard to gauge. Uh, so I'm basing that assumption um, mostly off his body language and the way he carries himself. 
Um, the only time we really see Woody looking very confident is at the end of the film when he's driving through the town and he's, you know, kind of holding himself up high in his new car. And, and we know it's an illusion, but, um, you know, that's the only time we really see Woody carrying himself in a way um, in which he is comfortable with himself. Um, and so that indicates that the um, macro system of like his small community that he came from is influencing his um, kind of despair uh, self-view. Um, it's not until he feels like he has something to show off to the town that he can really carry himself um, and be comfortable with himself. Um, and then I think kind of, again, on the opposite end of that scale, um, again, like I was talking about with uh, Kate, she is very grandiose, very tough, uh, doesn't really put up with any sort of crap from anyone. Um, and I think that this is, it's very similar to what I was saying um, with the positivity effect relating to her and the socio-emotional selectivity theory. Um, nobody really ever challenges Kate. She's very sure of herself because when she puts her foot down, um, she gets her way. Um, and again, that is at the microsystem level with her direct family. Even Woody doesn't really challenge her and they've been married. And then it's at the um, micro, uh, macro system level where uh, the community as a whole like doesn't really challenge her. When she puts her foot down about giving away the money to family, um, nobody really says anything about it. And so I think this influences um, a strong sense of self for Kate. So yeah, that's all I've got. This was a very interesting movie and a great last film to review.